immediately after that you will see a video of the interview of Chris Matthew with the Paul Krugman and why uh, he explains that our economy could recover in 18 months if we didn't have the Republicans destroying everything during the last as you can see from this chart since Obama started arrived we recovered all the job losses in the private sector that the Republican complain a lot actually we create more job law um, more job in the private sector than when we started with the re recession and uh, the problem is the public sector and are the teabagger governors in the red state that increased unemployment while the national unemployment was going down and before starting with the video we'll see right now you can just have a look at the stock market Obama is number three among all the presidents in the United States in terms of growth of the stock market so not only we are recovering on Main Street but also on Wall Street it's a very good sign another video today's jobs report Paul Krugman's a columnist for the New York Times he's author of a new book in this depression now and John Holloman is National Affairs Editor for New York Magazine. Uh, Mr. Krugman, thanks for joining us. Today's job report was a mixed bag, of course. 115,000 jobs were added to payrolls in April. The unemployment rate did drop to 8.1%, the lowest rate since President Obama took office. But, however, economic forecasters were predicting bigger growth this month, and they saw the smallest jobs gain in six months. That said, in the bigger picture, there have been fairly consistent jobs growth for some time now. Take a look at this chart. The recession that started under the previous president, that's of course W, shown in red, has been has seen job gains for nearly the past two years. The Obama years are in blue. We can see the uptick there month by month. Paul Krugman, for a lot of people, you're the ideal. You speak what people would like to see as policy in this country. So I'm going to give you a minute or so and then John to respond about the political possibility of that. If you were in charge, there was no right-wing opposition, no middle-of-the-road opposition, just you as an economist saying what ought to be fiscal policy. What kind of policy would you have run since coming to office for President Obama? What would you have done if he could have done anything? Well, we should have had a lot more. The, the stimulus, you know, they, they, they hate the word now, but the stimulus should have been bigger and it should have been more sustained. And above all, there should have been a continuing program of aid to state and local governments so they wouldn't be forced back, forced to, forced to cut their spending, forced to cut employment. Uh, we actually passed a landmark. As of the latest jobs report, private sector employment is now back to what it was when Barack Obama was sworn in as president. But public sector employment has been falling all the way through layoffs largely of school teachers, uh, which is the big drag on our economy right now and totally wrong-headed. You know, so we're not really now talking about stimulus, we're talking about why are we doing this austerity that is actually preventing us from having a full-fledged recovery. So if I could have waved a wand, I would have said, or been dictator for, for a day, I would have said, let's have an adequate, sustained program to keep government spending up, to keep people employed until the private sector is ready to spend again. There's other stuff I can talk about. We should have had more housing uh, mortgage relief. We should have more aggressive policy from the Federal Reserve. But that uh, this is the time for the government to spend. This is not the time to be cutting back. And if I could have done, if we could have done that, I think you can actually look at the numbers right now and say, if we had done that, unemployment would be below 7% right now. We would be in a just much better situation. We'd be well on the way to being out of this whole thing. Okay, that's if we had one party rule, John Holland, but we don't. We have two parties vying for power, often checking each other, preventing each other from doing what they believe. Why was that not, just lay it out, why would that not, was that not politically possible? What the, uh, Mr. Krugman said would have been ideal policy, a much more uh, expansionary fiscal policy, a lot more counter-cyclical aid to the states and localities. Well, I think first, Chris, that it's not just that we have a two-party system. I mean, there are a, a fair number of conservative Democrats in the Senate and in the House as well that would have been uh, that would have that would have quailed had had Barack Obama pushed for a much bigger stimulus than he did. I think it's it's still an open question, given the approval rating that he had when he came into office at, at almost 70 percent, maybe a little bit above 70 percent. Whether he could have done something bigger, the political advisors in the White House thought you couldn't get near that trillion dollar number, even though there were some of the economists that worked. For him, as we all know now, that we're advocating that or thought that was the right number. Um, a political calculation was made. It was very hard to pass that bill, even at $800 billion. It just barely passed, as you remember.
member. And certainly it's the case that after that, there's been no appetite for that kind of expansionary fiscal policy. Again, not just the Republicans certainly are steadfast against it, but there are a lot of Democrats who not seeing an immediate payoff um, in terms of the jobs numbers, in terms of the economic picture, yeah. are afraid to go that way. I think one of the biggest mistakes that Barack Obama made was to not set expectations really low at the very beginning of his administration, not talk about how long it was going to take to get out of the trough. By, by raising expectations that the first stimulus would solve the problem, he created a problem for himself down the line when it didn't work more quickly. Well, here's this morning, here's Mitt Romney, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Quick, we're only to respond to Romney and doing his political uh, sort of knee jerk this morning. He relished it, he must have had a good night's sleep, it looks like he was up early, loaded for bear, here he is enjoying the bad numbers, let's watch. We should be seeing numbers uh, in the 500,000 jobs created per month. This is way, way, way off from what should happen in a normal recovery. It's a terrible and very disappointing uh, report this morning. Uh, clearly, the American people are wondering why this recovery isn't happening faster, why it's taken years and years uh, for the recovery to occur. Well, there you go. Mr. Krugman, respond to that. Well, Romney? I mean, yeah, the last time we had a president who presided over 500,000 uh, a month job numbers, it was a president by the name of Bill Clinton. This recovery is actually better than the recovery that George W. Bush presided over. And since Romney is proposing to recapitulate completely Bush policies, why is he saying that he would do better? I mean, this is, uh, it's terrible. It, it, he's completely right that, that this is not what we want to be seeing. But the question is, is Romney proposing anything that wouldn't actually make it worse? I think it's, rather, it's important to actually take a look, just not, not just at the United States, but overseas. Um, the Republican prescription is for big government spending cuts. And they've been right. claiming that that will somehow create lots of jobs. We're getting those in Europe. Take a look at Ireland, take a look at Spain, where they're getting exactly what the Republicans say we should do, and those are catastrophes, right? So well, these catastrophes, you didn't mention the Netherlands, you didn't mention uh, the, the whole problem in Europe, it's rebelling against this right. uh, slow growth or no growth policy. The Republicans sort of layer it up though, they say, well, we're gonna cut spending, but somehow we're gonna stimulate economics. So they go both ways. They say, we're gonna cut all the programs affecting poor people. You know, in fact, the British Labor, guy, Labor Party guy said to me a couple weeks ago over there, how come right-wingers, guys like Romney, believe that the best way to get poor people to work is to cut them? And the best way to get rich people to right. work harder is to give them more. That's right. And just, why is it better for one rich people to, that work hard if you give more money, but if you screw the poor people, they'll somehow be you know, whipped into action somehow? Yeah, and if you're trying to look for a logical explanation, you're not going to find it. But what you're going to ask is, you know, who, who is, who are the masters? Whose interests are the party serving? And it's pretty clear. The Republican Party, given a choice between what actually makes sense economically and what redistributes income uh, from the poor to the rich, reverse Robin Hood, you know which one they're going to choose. So, yeah, and this is, it, it's very frustrating for somebody in my position, although, it's, of course, it's much more frustrating for the 3.9 million people who've been out of work for more than a year, but to see that we've actually had a kind of acid test of economic doctrines. Look at what's happened in Europe. Look at the, how austerity policies have worked. Look at those countries, mostly in, not in the West. Look at countries like South Korea that have had effective stimulus programs. We've had an acid test of different economic theories. Keynesian economic doctrine, the doctrine that says now is the time for the government to spend more, not less, has been overwhelmingly confirmed by, by experience. This is, so I, you know, like I say in the book, we could end this depression now. We could end it fast, 18 months probably, if we yeah, did but the right thing, but nobody I mean, believes it. What about John Holland's question? I mean, how do you sell to people a deficit of over two trillion? I mean, if you get to one point six, you get to one point nine. The American people are going to see two to one uh, spending over revenues. They're going to say this is World War Two without the rationing, without the bond sales. Can I, you do that? Can I you sustain that, the, that politically? I think that the political people tend to think way too much about the next news cycle and not enough about how things play out. That the, the best political strategy is actually the one that delivers the best results. And let me say, even in terms of the short run news cycle, there, last fall, Obama made a, made a bid for more economic you know, support, uh, which, which wasn't enacted, and didn't expect it to be enacted, but he went bigger than people expected. It was bolder. It was, it was, I, I was happy. It was, I was surprised that it was good. Apparently his political team were all saying, oh, don't do that, the numbers will scare people. Turned out that it wasn't that way at all, that, that the public actually welcomed the, the prospect that Obama was trying to do something. He needs to stand up for what he thinks is right. He needs to say, this is the right thing to do. Um, and then he has to do a Truman and say, look, this is the do-nothing Congress that is standing the way of... Do you think that this is fair about millionaires and teachers? Look at this chart 
have a look at that and have a look at the tax rates of the wealthy and the super wealthy how they plunged during the last year considering the 280 percent increase in their income which is a scandal with Obama reliance on foreign oil plunged and gas as well but the production increased at points and that we never saw before both gas and oil internal oil production but the Republican subsidize the big oil while they want to cut your Medicare your uh, teachers your health care and then we started the war of the Republican against the women but not only against the women actually we'll see the next chart against everybody apart from white rich male and that's it practically no other one got advantages if you look at this chart of course unemployment is going down but it could be much better and this is the reason why Paul Kruger Krugman is so pissed with the Republicans that they are blocking everything in December 2010 for instance Obama was uh, going to launch another stimulus because the stimulus that we had it was not that much and unfortunately the Republicans voted against so the economy they slowed down the economy in 2011 practically the new Tea Party governors they start firing people in the public sectors so unemployment in the red state went up while nationwide was going down but this balance is slowed down the economy again in, in December 2011 practically there was a job bill that Obama proposed well Republicans were again slowing down the economy again in 2012 the Congress started the attack against everybody gays women you name it so everybody was under the control of the huge state government you know because Republicans they complain about the federal government but the reality of the fact is that the federal government if, even if they launch any, have any law they can over over um, turn a state level but you cannot do the same at state level when you are at state level you are totally fucked so if you have these laws going on you are totally fucked and uh, at the very end you can attack women gays unions students elderly disabled vote rights you name it and then what they did like Mussolini no more no less so practically in the election 2012 they are going to slow down the economy because they are doing like what's happening in Europe if you look at the facts in Europe Spain and UK are in double deep recession with GDP going down and unemployment going up and so we have that the rich Republicans screw the blue collar Republicans as much as they can and convincing them that we are the problem while they screw them that's the funny things that's happening in the red states